position, and he started 18th in the mellow yellow Pontiac. He won, of course, last year at Watkins Glen in the rain dela in the rain short event. Yeah, remember he told John Turner he wasn't gonna take his word for it. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> he wanted to hire authority. Yeah, that's right. And Jeff Bodine down in turn 11 is under Ricky Rudd for second place. Here they come Look out of here. corner 11 onto the straightaway. They're side by side as they come toward the start finish line. Now let's see who gets the position in turn one and Bodine is going to do it. Wow. But you know Jeff Bodine needs the money because he bought the 17 this week for I don't know how many million dollars. So I know that's going to make him very aggressive. He needs the money desperately. Riding with Mark Martin, and yeah, he has bought that team, and they will keep Jimmy Hensley and Tom Kendall in the car for the rest of this year. We're riding with Mark Martin, and now he tries to make a bid from Ricky Rudd, and he will do it. Jeff Bodine to second, Mark Martin to third, and Rudd back to fourth. So the positions are changing up front, except that Dale Earnhardt continues to lead the St. Mark Supermarkets 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Sears Point. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Sears Point for the St. Mark Supermarkets 300. Here's the interval leaderboard showing you that Jeff Bodine is about a second and a half behind the leader Earnhardt. Rudd is two seconds behind, Martin two and a half, and Ernie Irvin, who was running in second position, is back to four seconds out of the lead in fifth position. Now Jerry has a report on Ernie Irvin and why he's been losing positions recently. I asked Tony Glover and the crews here in the Kodak team if they had a problem with the car, overheating the car, not handling as well as it was. They said, no, the car seemed to be handling real well. I got to believe that Ernie is cooling his jets early. When I was in their truck this morning, they were calculating fuel mileage. Most of the teams wanted to go around 25 left to be able to make this race on two fuel stops. When they calculated their fuel mileage, no matter how you did it with an ink pen, pencil, or calculator, it was very, very close that they could make it 25 laps. In fact, Brunt Pittman just told me a minute ago, unless we cool it, we may not make it 25 laps to be able to make it on two stops. Let's go to John Kernan. Well, Jerry, we see we see some problems. Jimmy Spencer having a problem with his transmission early. They've gotten that pretty much taken care of. But for Bobby Hillen Jr., they are sitting on pit road. The car is up on jack stands. They have suffered a broken drive shaft. So a tough break for the Highland Myers Ford. And now we have a new leader as Jeff Bodine has passed Dale Earnhardt. And Bodine comes to the lead. And Mark Martin now knocking on Jarrett's rear spoiler for a second spot. That's the other day old, Bob. That's Earnhardt, Oh, Bob. sorry. And black number three. I gotcha. It's normally Dale Earnhardt driving. It is this weekend. It's been two weeks, and so uh, I've forgotten everything that I've learned. Earnhardt second. <laughs> and Mark Martin, as you say, is knocking on his door as they go into the carousel. I don't know if Earnhardt's car might be getting a little bit loose or the handle has gone away a little bit. Certainly, everybody else is. Or, or several of them at least have been working on him. Here's Mark Martin now trying to move on the inside of him, coming into turn seven, and he does. He's going to make the pass. Martin has been very strong coming off of his turn, but they go into number eight side by side. Who will get the advantage as they head down through there? Earnhardt. Yep. Dale held off the challenge of Martin. He maintains second spot. You know, it's a strange thing to me, Ned, that the Chevrolets took off three Chevrolets and two Fords. Now the Fords are coming to the front. I don't know if it's a brand thing or just team thing. I don't know. Interesting, though, the way it's working. As we mentioned, and now let's see if Mark Martin can take second from Earnhardt. Yes, he does. Mark Martin goes to second. As we mentioned, Jeff Bodine has purchased the Allen Kowicki team. There were many bidders for this team. So earlier in the weekend, we asked Felix Zavadas, the administrator of Allen's estate, why it was sold to Jeff Bodine. Well, the main reason he chose Bodine, he wanted his team to stay with the race driver, like Allen was. And he felt that by putting Bodine, or selling Bodine the team, that Bodine would continue the same thing that Allen did. And it worked out good for everybody that way. But after talking with the fellows that are in that number seven team, it was quite obvious. They're dedicated, they're loyal. They were very loyal to Allen. And that's the kind of loyalty I want with my people. And really, they're the ones, those fellas, 
those 14 or 15, 16 people that make up that number seven team are the reason Andy and I were interested in purchasing, in purchasing the team. You can buy trucks, you can buy cars, you can buy all these parts, tools. You know, they're dying, they're just out there. Anyone can purchase those things, but to get the right people to make up this team is a hard part of auto racing. It's a hard part of any business. I could see they were the right people, and we pursued the, the deal, and we're very happy we got it. Officially, GEB Inc., of which Jeff Bodine is the president, now the owner of what was Alan Kowicki Racing. And we jump now inside the number seven car, which is driven here today by Tom Kendall. Tom is in 19th position. And he's watching a battle up in front of him. Michael Walker just moved around Brent Bodine to take over the 17th position. And Bobby Labonte has fun here. And he's trying to back up and get going again. In fact, he does get going. Almost backed out in front of Hutch Strickland, but he gets going and everything's okay. And there you see the serial on Tom starting 33rd, then to 27th, 24th, 20th. And with 17 laps completed, he is in the top 20 at 19. Down shifting now for turn 11. Here he's going through the corner right now. And he's showing off 11 and back to Jeff Bodine. I'll tell you what, Mark Martin is gaining on him. Oh, here's a pass. Uh -oh. Maybe. Oh, oh, and Martin spins. I think he ran up on Jeff a lot quicker than he thought he was going to be able to. As we look out the windshield of Mark Martin's car, another car carrying a camera for us. Now he gets it right. He's headed in the right direction. Lost a lot of positions there, though. He sure did. Terry Labonte was the last to get by him before Martin got the thing straight and back on the accelerator. So Mark Martin, in an effort to take the lead, and now he's still having trouble. He's looks all like over the track. Looks like he's got a flat tire or something, maybe. Well, he got some debris on his tires when he's spun up there, but he's had all kinds of problems. Nick, coming towards you. Yeah, he's coming in here. still coming in at a pretty good rate of speed. Rusty Wallace has caught him right now. Rusty has really made a move back up through the pack. Mark's really slowed down coming into this turn. See, we don't, it's hard to tell if there's a tire down. He gets off of there pretty good, but Rusty is really going on after him down through the S's. Rusty Wallace, does he stop? on that caution flag and check the thing to see if it's overheating and change tires. He has been a rocket ship going through this field of cars. And Jerry Punch has an update from the pit area. Steve Mill just asked Mark Martin if he had a flat tire and Mark said no. It's just really bouncing around. They run a lot of low air pressure here. They really low, lower the air pressure on these cars to get them to handle up through the, the road course. But it looks flat from here. In fact, it's hard for the crew to even go. So they had to ask him, and Mark said, no, it, it's fine. This is a nice position now. Mark Martin slipping from second to ninth. Wallace is in tenth. Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty, both of whom have made great runs to the front from their starting positions. And John Kernan has a report on the Kyle Petty run. Bob, you know how most of these teams prepare a road-specific car for the road courses? Well, Kyle Petty is driving his Martinsville North Rooksboro car here today. Robin Pemberton told me that this race track is unlike Watkins Glen because it's kind of 50-50 left and right. So they just made some suspension changes and brought their Martinsville, their short track car here. And it appears to be doing the trick for them this afternoon. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Back when I was running road courses, Bob, that's what we did. And here's Jimmy Spencer spinning around in the car. He gets it headed again. Everything's okay. Caution in that corner, but that doesn't mean that it's caution all around the track. Well, we'll see what happens. He comes up on Jeff Gordon and maybe had to hit the brakes going into that turn. And the back end just gets around and he can never get it back. Bob, I started to say back when I was driving race cars and, and running on road courses, we only had Riverside at that time and Bridgehampton, New York, and that's what we did. We took a short track car because we only had three race cars, a dirt track car and a short track car and a big track car, so we took the short track car to the road courses. <laughs> By the way, up there where Jimmy Spencer spun, the guy that was in front of him, Jeff Gordon, also spun in that section of the racetrack just a lap before that.